Okay, I hear you. We'll compare these two. Jeez. Seriously though, you all keep asking for this one, and if you follow my channel at all, you know I'm going to say there's no winner. I love both of these phones. They can both power two screens at the same time, and that's about where the similarities end. So if you're looking to me as an admitted hardcore LG fan to pick up a V60 and say something like, it's basically the same thing, then it's like you really don't know me at all. Unique hardware and software features cost more, and sometimes that can be difficult to quantify. In the case of the Duo, I think it's pretty easy. This is radical engineering. The general metaphor in using an LG is you essentially get two phones stapled together that can occasionally act like one larger canvas. The Duo is the complete opposite. The Duo doesn't know that it's a dual screen. It thinks it's one tablet. The UI is one large canvas. The hardware just happens to be cut in half. In LG land, everything is a bit more deliberate, like operating two separate phones. There are gestures to streamline a little, but basically you turn on one phone, then turn on the other phone. You can flick apps back and forth, but the strongest use for this hardware really is treating each screen as a solo workspace. Also, the dual screen implementation here in a case prevents the ability to use another display. The Duo doesn't always succeed, but mostly lands the idea that the phone should interpret your actions and deliver the correct UI. Uh, you don't turn on one screen and then manually activate another screen, you open it. You don't fiddle with a little menu, you drag and swipe apps where you want them. It works so well that when you do need to tell it to do something more deliberately, like switch from one single screen to the other by flipping and then tapping the display, it's not as fluid or as organic, so that interaction stands out. Like in the camera app, you should just give me a button to switch from one screen to the other screen. You know, gestures and rotating and tapping, not as good as a button there. But because this is one large tablet canvas, plugging the Duo into a display delivers a great Windows split screen template for multitasking. There's no desktop mode on a Duo, but it blurs the lines enough where you might not need one. When it comes to our more traditional phone benchmarking, price performance, content creation, the V60 is the winner. It's hands down, it's more powerful, it gets ridiculous battery life, has much better cameras, and a glorious audio file grade headphone jack. But for all of these performance advantages, it's not as nice to cart around. Bigger, heavier, a bit clumsier to use on the go. It's the more powerful computer, but the Surface might be a better companion gadget depending on your workflow. Symmetrical body panels, hinges that hold the angle of each screen in place better, a form factor that opens up like a little hipster notebook, and a design that does lay perfectly flat on a table. I want you to think about that. In the year 2020, no pocket computer can just lay flat on a table. I really hate that waka 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 feeling because of all the camera bulges. So it's kind of been a bummer to hear techies whinging on about how the duo isn't worth it for the monies. Techies have become the most conservative consumer group. And if we trade a few specs for a radical new form factor, that is a part of what defines value. I don't want to get all Panos Panay emotional on you here, but a truly unique build opens the doors to unique interactions. The Duo is slimmer, smaller, and more discreet to use. And even with a bit of launch software jank, interactions are more fluid. LG has a solid lead, a year and a half lead on dual displays in the market, but Microsoft's implementation has already made it easier for other app developers to enable new uses for dual screen. And in the ultimate irony, Microsoft might have enabled the best visual metaphor to date for using Android as a tablet. Now the Surface team knows a few things about slate computing. Those of you in my YouTube comments who post about worth itness and justifying a purchase, I need you to see spectrum because you're failing to see proportionality. The V60 should and will sell better because it's designed to reach more people. By design, it's a modular approach for people who want a phone, a note competitor, a dual display, or all of the above. It's less expensive to make these experiences part-time or modular, and while less expensive is great, that comes with compromises too, like additional bulk, 
less sturdy hinges, and more deliberate software interactions. I wouldn't discount style either. Now, people have nodded encouragingly when they see my LG dual screens. I mean, they get the functionality, but the few folks I've shown the Surface, it's dropped jaws. Making a full-time dual display by design means you reach a smaller potential group of consumers, but the execution of that idea matters for growing a product segment. If we want new form factors, new features, we've got to embrace the people who will be more excited by this, and that's on us. Techies shouldn't be on teams defining success by popularity and sales volume, which is hilarious because the conversations at the start of 2020 were all about how LG isn't doing enough to be worth it for the monies and how this case is a gimmick and I can't think of anything to do with dual display. But now that there's a less algorithmically search popular dual display, now that we can pick on Microsoft and dredge up their history of Windows phones, suddenly LG is being held up as the solution. Now we like what LG is doing with this case. It's a bad look, techies. We can do better than that. We've been so conditioned to only view a phone as one thing, this slab of glass on glass, and the only improvements come from incremental processing power bumps. We need to stop paying lip service to the idea of competition and really start embracing some competing ideas. There's no winner here, and that's not a cop-out. I would genuinely recommend these to different consumers. It's a shame that more folks in our tech entertainment circles don't see that as a positive sign. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I hope you'll check out the links in the merch store down below, which helped me not pack every video with baked in ads and sponsorships. There's a support page on somegadgetguy.com for a current list of all of my affiliates and partnerships. Or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Those are super cool tech pals, pretty much the best people on the internet. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.